Just like other parts of the communications networking architecture, optical transport systems are changing, becoming more open and disaggregated, enabling network operators to introduce functionality and embrace innovation in a way they wouldn't have been able to in the past. Well, to find out more about this trend, I'm talking today with Tim Dorian, Vice President of Solutions Marketing at Infinera. Tim, great to talk to you again. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, now, it's late 2022, about two and a half years after the world was turned upside down by the COVID-19 pandemic. Some parts of the world, at least, are getting back to some sort of normalcy with business travel back on the agenda and industry trade shows and conferences back in people's calendars. Uh, what has been the impact on the telecom infrastructure sector of all this upheaval? Yeah, I don't know if the last two and a half years of the pandemic have created any new trends, but it's certainly turbocharged or accelerated existing ones. Think about things like at home shopping or distance learning or folks working from home. All of those things have accelerated under um, the last two and a half years of the pandemic. Um, that's resulted in uh, strong capacity demands uh, placed on our networks to the point where we're virtual, we're seeing uh, effectively uh, bandwidth demand doubling every two years. Um, combine that with supply chain challenges and supply chain disruptions, and what you what you see is service providers you know, more interested, uh, more embracing, and more deploying open optical networking where they can separate the transponder and optical engine fun function from the line systems. And uh, the benefits from that, of course, being more choice, faster innovation, and overall improved economics and able to deal with uh, a combination of the growing capacity and uh, supply challenges. Okay, now we hear a lot about open infrastructure. But how can service providers have the confidence that what they're getting is actually open and aligns across multiple vendors? Yeah, service providers need to need to collaborate. You know, first, I would say with vendors who are embracing uh, open as a as a concept. And in addition, they're demonstrating some some leadership, uh, have some progress in this area, and they're also collaborating. Uh, in the industry, as an example, with organizations like the Internet Engineering Task Force or the IETF or the OIF uh, or uh, the Telecom Infra Project. Um, just last week, there was uh, the Telecom Infra Project or TIP Fuse event in Madrid, and um, they were handing out awards and uh, uh, badges for certain capabilities, acknowledging um, evolutions that vendors had made. And uh, as one example, uh, Infinera's GXG42 received a, uh, a badge related to um, its open interface and, and having open APIs, common data models, and uh, open interfaces that are consistent with the open config uh, model. And uh, you know that's critical because that's a place where multiple vendors and service providers meet to both uh, talk about these specifications and approaches, but also then do either uh, a paper or lab or field type of evaluation um, to ensure things are, are indeed headed in that kind of common direction from an industry perspective. Now, with increased performance and reduced size and power in coherent pluggable optics, DWDM engines are available not just as integrated elements in optical networking equipment, but as small standalone products that can be slotted into routers and switches. To what extent is adding coherent DWDM pluggables in routers still a big challenge? And what is Infinera doing in this part of the market? Yeah, one of the exciting things is that when you when you look at where um, you know silicon technology has been able to go, um, where the ability to to shrink power, to shrink size, um, 
and, and yet have reasonable performance, um, that's really led to the advent of coherent optical uh, pluggables technology. And um, indeed, with the uh, IP over DWDM approach, these pluggables are coming out of uh, transponders and traditional optical line systems and headed into uh, routers and switches. And we envision a host of other platforms as well. Think servers and, and uh, 5G radios and, and things like that. Um, in order to ease that integration you know, burden uh, and support additional sophisticated functions, things like uh, remote loopback, diagnostics, um, optical spectrum analysis and uh, streaming telemetry. Um, Infinera has been a collaborative partner and a founder of the OpenXR Forum, where um, they're looking at a dual track management structure where the optical engine can talk directly with the optical controller uh, and minimize the type of software or the amount of software necessary in the host device to support that advanced feature and functionality and level of sophistication. In addition to that, the OpenXR Forum is working with um, the uh, OIF that I mentioned before on extensions to this um, uh, common management interface spec or CMIS uh, interface that talks about how pluggables get managed in host devices like routers through a read-write register structure and uh, those are two key areas where um, we'll help in terms of how to manage these devices, but also how to add advanced functionality without creating additional integration and software development burden on the part of routers or other uh, type of host devices. Yeah, these are clearly very important developments for operators as they change the way they plan and build their networks out. And obviously, Infonera has been working on a number of these areas for years. So, but looking ahead, what can we expect to see from Infonera in the future? Yeah, Infonera is laser focused on compact modular optical platforms that are open and give service providers uh, choice and provide some uh, faster innovation and improved economics. We're also focused on optical engines, both embedded and pluggable engines. Our 800 gig I6 uh, breaking records and, and shipping uh, around the globe. Uh, in, in our pluggable engines, currently today 400 gig, but you'll see us scaling those in, that pluggable engine technology up and down, up to 800 gig, but also down to 100 gig as we look to kind of reimagine what is the future of the edge of network connectivity beyond today's 10 gig or 100 gig uh, gray optics. And third, um, we're also focused on the software automation to pull this together and to enable open optical networking to be an easier reality for service providers, because we know that operational uh, complexity is one of the potential barriers uh, preventing this from being broadly adopted and uh, and being everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a, a great move towards uh, disaggregated and more open and more software driven networks. Uh, but the whole integration effort is uh, still regarded as a, a, quite a hurdle for the operators to yeah. overcome. So, uh, Tim, listen, thanks very much for the insights and updates today. It's been Great to talk to you and thanks for joining us uh, in this summit. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ray.